Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for Saturday with Stacy, YouTube number 204. Now this is the next release of Simply Defined dies and a brand new product for us. We also have the next collection of must-haves. So if you have already got your ovals and your rectangles, well now we have the circles to go with. We're just moving along with those. <laughs> And if you don't know what a must-have die is yet, don't worry, we're gonna get to that. I have winner winner chicken dinner to talk about, and I have to tell you, this YouTube is supposed to be about the simply defined release of dies. It is. But I have a new product that we've been working on for so long that that's what I'm gonna focus on today. <laughs> and you may think, Oh, that doesn't sound very interesting, but wait, I promise you when you see what it does, it, it, it just, I'm so overwhelmed that it is finally here. It has taken 13 months to get here. <laughs> That's a long time, but patience prevails and it is exactly what I wanted it to be and it does exactly what I expected it to do. So I am happy to wait 13 months to get a product that makes my heart happy. Okay, so we've got winner winner chicken dinner that I'm, I'm gonna announce and then we're gonna tilt on down and we're gonna get started for today. I've got so many samples from the SMS girls. You're, you're going to be amazed at what they did with this new Simply Defined collection called With Sentiment. So we've got the bundle of dies, the six dies that make up the the $59.99 special where you get the dies for $10 each if you buy it in the bundles. We have a contour die that makes my heart happy. We have an embossing folder at $3.75, which is a rock star price. And then we have the must-haves, the, the circle must-haves, which of course will go through your big shot or your big kick or your vagabond or your grand caliber or your gosh, almost any machine. So um, so I'm gonna read our winner winner chicken dinners for today. And then I'm gonna dive right into the new product because there are a few techniques that I wanna show you because I think when you see it, you're gonna go, eh, but wait. <laughs> Trust me on this. And you may wanna have a paper and pencil handy to take notes. So if you're gonna pause me, now is a good time. <laughs> There's my pause face. Hi. <laughs> okay, I'm back, and um, and uh, let's read off our winner winner chicken dinner. Now this is from last week's YouTube, YouTube number two hundred and three, and it had to do with the Do Crafts calendars, the two thousand eighteen calendars that we have now. Yay! So these people are going to win a collection of the product that was used in that YouTube, where it was the Kaiser Craft inks and the Kaiser Craft mini albums and the do crafts calendar tabs and the craft consortium bling that you can color any color you want with a sharpie or a big marker so if you are helena ford congratulations helena way to go you are this week's winner winner chicken dinner but you're not alone because we always pick two winners are you ready our next winner is Danielle Brown, congratulations Danielle Brown. You are also a winner winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. We are very excited for Danielle and for Helena. How are you girls gonna claim your prize? Easy peasy, go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Look for the link at the top that says winner winner chicken dinner. Click it, follow the directions, and just as soon as we're able, we will have your prizes in your mailbox. So congratulations, Danielle Brown and Helena Ford, way to go. Now, if you wanna be a winner winner chicken dinner and have a chance to win some prizes from Scrapbooking Made Simple, it's super easy. You watch this YouTube and you post a comment, but you do have to have a YouTube username and login. You have to be able to log into a YouTube account. You subscribe to the Scrapbooking Made Simple channel. There's a little red button that says subscribe. Subscribe to us and then you can post a comment. As long as the comment is kind, I will approve it. That's all I ask is that it, the comment be kind and I will approve it and then we have a random picker. Our software picks two winners every time and you never know when it's gonna be your turn. So, all right, I'm gonna tilt on down. We're gonna get started for today. This is 
The next collection, the May collection of Simply Defined, please remember that when these dies are gone, they're gone. They will not be repeated unless we are able to do a best of this year, which I'm not sure we are. But if, if you like it, if you see it, if you want it, go ahead and order it because once we are sold out, we are sold out. And I think with sentiment is a beautiful collection. I know it's mine and I shouldn't say that, but I do, I do, I do. <laughs> All right, you guys, it's good to see you. Happy Saturday. Down we go. Woohoo. Okay. So tilting down, zooming in. Oh, look at me, like a pro almost. Oh, there we go. Okay, so downstairs we have our free in-store make and take going on right now, and this is what they're making. Super cute, isn't it? This is one of the With Sentiment dies, and this is the Congratulations die. Now, this is uh, A6 card base, so you can have an idea. So that's just a little bit bigger than an A2. You can have an idea about the sizing of the die, and what we put it on, if you can see that, is super thick foam. Can you see that super thick foam? Well, that's what I'm going to start with today, but I did want to show you what the make and take is, and and there are six different words with the With Sentiment collection. So there's, like I said, six different words, then there's a contour die, there's an embossing folder, and then the must-haves circles. So I'm going to put this aside for right now, and I think I'm going to bring over my new product. Oh, I know, I'm so excited. It is Simply Defined, Simply Dimensional, although dimensional is spelled wrong, and I think that that was my fault. It's by the same people who did our adhesive. So I'm not sure if it's my fault, but you know what? <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Dimensional can be spelled any way you want. It's phonetic, how about that? So what I have here is foam sheets, and I'm gonna open it up, and I'm gonna show you what's unique about them. First off, there is four foam sheets here. So you have four foam sheets. They are double-sided, sticky on both sides. So when you peel the liner off, it is sticky right now. And I'm not gonna fib, it really is sticky. We did two different, two different thicknesses. We gave you two millimeter, and we gave you three millimeter. Can you see how thick that is? So there's two and there's three. As far as I know, and you know, I really do try not to copy somebody else's stuff. I really do try to look and see what is what I would like, what I've wanted, and isn't out there in the market already. As far as I know, there is nobody else doing foam sheets anywhere near this thickness and nowhere near the price we have them for. Now I wanna tell you, can you see this little bump here, this little wrinkle in the liner? That's typical, that's going to happen. It doesn't matter if it be flat or if it have a bump in it, it's going to work the same regardless of which side. It really makes no difference at all. But because the sheets are so big, they are eight and a half by 11. Gosh, are they A4? Maybe I did A4. I might have done eight, no, eight and a half, eight by 11, okay. I was thinking, did I do A4 for the embossing folder? Because they're so big, it's hard to put a liner down flat each and every time. So if you see little bumps, don't worry about it. It's going to be fine, and I'm going to show you that it's gonna be fine. Now, foam, what makes it so exciting? Well, a lot of you asked for foam adhesive, and you had wanted me to do it in a roll, similar to my Simply Defined adhesive, my Stacy tape. But first off, there's already companies that do them in a roll, and, and they do a great job, and you're really limited to what you can do with a roll. With a sheet, with a sheet, you can cut yourself off any size that you need, any width that you need, any shape that you need. You're able to, to do that because you've got all of this to play with. And we're able to give you thicker, more dimensional, uh, what do I want to, more dimensional height to it 
than what you might be, well, what you do get on foam. That's, that's absolutely true. So you get two that are at three millimeter high and two that are at two millimeter high. I do know that there's another wonderful company out there that does make foam sheets, but they do them at about one millimeter, maybe a hair bit bigger than one millimeter. So you really don't get, look at that dimension. You really don't get the height and the pop that you're looking for with something that is so thin. So again, I wanted to bring these to you and, and remember you can cut them into strips. You can cut them into, into squares. You can, you can use them as your regular adhesive. You can use them as pop dots behind anything because you can make it the size that you need. But I wanted it to do more. And that's where I'm going to start with you today. I wanted it to do more. So I'm going to take the three mil. I think we're going to work with the thickest, the thickest millimeter, just so you can see how amazing it is. I'm going to work with the three mil today. And I'm going to start by just grabbing a piece of pretty patterned paper, perhaps. Pretty patterned paper. Now I'm going to cut my foam smaller than what I need on my paper. I want to cut it smaller than smaller than my paper, but bigger than my die, because yes, we're going to die cut this. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut out a piece and you can hear it crunch because it is that thick. So I'm going to start with the easiest thing first, and I'm just going to show you how to use it for a die cut but then we're gonna get much more technical and much more difficult and much more, because ah, I really am excited about this. All right, remember I said, don't pay attention to the little bumps. It makes no difference. I'm gonna peel the top off. Now, you don't want to touch this. You've got a little handle here. You don't want to touch this. If you do, I put my nail on it earlier and it literally stuck to my nail and peeled off. This is very tacky. It is very sticky. I tried to make it uh, like my Stacy tape where you know once you put it down, it's going to be down without it losing its dimension. That was one of the most important things to me is that it not lose its dimension. It doesn't, sometimes um, dimensional pop dots will, will crush down, will, will sink down. And it was vital that it not do that. I'm going to put my piece of paper right over the top of it and my paper is now stuck to it. Let's just cut off my little excess here and my little excess there. Easy peasy mac and cheesy. Now I'm going to be using one of my with sentiment dies and I'm going to be using my best wishes and I'm actually going to be using the open frame die. This is an open frame die. Why? Because it's a frame and it's open in the center. This die that actually says best wishes is not an open frame die because it's got stuff in the center. So I'm going to start with this one, best wishes. And again, I already showed you. Congratulations. So now you know we have best wishes and congratulations. All right, I'm going to put that one down for right now. I've got my foam on the back. I've got my die. I'm going to bring over my Big Shot machine. It's okay if you have a Big Kick machine, if you have a Cuddle Bug machine, if you have a Vagabond machine, a Vintage machine, a Fabby machine. What machine do you have? If it will do a wafer die, you're going to be just fine with the uh, with Sentiment Collection. So. I am using my standard multi-purpose platform, which is sold separately. The machines now come with the extended multi-purpose platform. If that's the platform that you own and you don't want to invest in getting the smaller platform, don't worry. You're going to do the sandwich exactly the same. Makes no difference if it's the long one or the small one. I happen to like the small one better. In fact, we're the ones who pretty much begged, plead, cried, insisted that Ellison think about bringing this back for the Sizzix brand. And I like it better because the majority of my dies that I own, even if they're not mine, fit on this platform. And so it's a little easier to use than the longer one, but it is sold separately. So if that's not something you wanna put your money into, if you'd rather have more dies, well, I get that. 
All right, I'm gonna put a cut plate down. I'm gonna put my die right on top of my paper and I'm gonna send it on through. Now it's really thick, but it's going to cut through beautifully. Now if you want, you can do a simple rotate Simple rotate, hopefully I'm not too too wide, and send it on back. Up to you, because it's an open frame die, it really does cut through on the first time, but you people get so accustomed to flipping and rotating. All right, I have now got my shape. I've got it thick. Look at how thick that foam is. And the foam did not smoosh down. The foam stayed dimensional even though we ran it through the machine and we ran it back. Now, gosh, and I still have this piece left. I don't know that you want to, you would want to. Oh yeah, baby. I wouldn't throw that piece away either because now you've, I would trim it down, make it nice and pretty, but it's also on foam. Put that there. You've got the dimension there. Holy smokes, artichokes, another great piece to be using for something. So I'm going to put this one just off to the side for right now, and I am just going to grab my frame die so I can show you my, uh, my best wishes die so I can show you what it will look like if I were to layer them. Now, with this die, and we're not done with the phono, I'm just starting with something easy. With this die, this die does not have a cut edge all the way around. So there's not a cut edge all the way around. It's going to cut into the paper, but it's not going to come out of the paper. So for this die, I am going to want to use my trusty dusty precision base plate. And this is also sold separate by Ellison to go with your Big Shot, your Big Kick, your Vagabond, your Vintage, your Fabby. And remember, if you can read the directions, you've got it backwards. You want that metal face up. And you can see that I've got a lot of paper in there. If that bothers you, just take a wet white beak, go in there and rub it really good and it will come clean. Eventually it will, paper will get embedded in it again and that's okay. Then you just take a wet white beak and scrub it clean and it will be fine. I am going to, I want to make sure that I have enough room to rotate. So I'm going to put my precision base plate. I'm working on a magnetic platform. Ellison does not recommend that. If you wanted to use your standard multi-purpose platform or your extended multi-purpose platform, you would just put your precision base plate right down on top of it. All tabs closed. I'm going to bring my machine right back over. And that precision base plate acts as your bottom plate, your bottom cut plate. So you don't have any other bottom cut plate then a do not cut plate right on top. Well, actually you want one that's kind of warped and yucky because the pressure that it's going to put on that die to cut through beautifully, it's gonna leave a little bit of an embossing into your, into your top cut plate. Okay, so through once, rotate, send back. And now remember what I said. It's not going to cut all the way out. It's going to leave this inside. So I'm gently going to pull, pull my die cut out.
So it's going to leave a lot of stuff behind, which is what it's kind of getting tangled up on. There we go. Are we done? Get all the little bits and pieces out. And then we've got our best wishes. Okay. So I think that's good enough for now. So I've got my best wishes ready to go, but I need to take it all the way out. I've got my best wishes ready to go, but I need to pull it all the way out. That's going to, I see that there's still little pieces in there, but there, I'm just going to keep trying to pull them on out. <laughs> my best wishes are good to go. So now I need to take the frame die and use the frame die around it. And that's going to pull the entire piece out. Now the frame die doesn't require the precision base plate because if you use the precision base plate on a frame die, what will happen is there's so much pressure, your die will warp. Will it ruin your die? No. Is it the best thing for your die? No, but it won't hurt it. You just have to kind of get used to bending it back a little bit and it will still cut. But there's nothing in the center of this die to hold this die straight, unlike this one where there's lots in the center so it keeps its form. This one, if you run it through a precision base plate, it is going to warp. So I'm gonna bring back my multi-purpose platform. And you again, you could absolutely use a magnetic platform if you wanted to line everything up to make sure it doesn't all slip. If you've got a magnetic pl platform, that's great. If you don't, then you're just gonna line it on up You can use a little washi tape. You can use a little bit of repositionable tape. You can use a post-it note to hold everything in place. Okay, let's load it on up and send it on through. And now that's gonna cut out. Easy peasy, one cut. I've got my die cut out. I've got my background that I've done on my phone. And I'm now ready to line them up. So that's one way of using the foam. I will tell you, the foam is really not great on really intricate dies. It works so much better on open frame dies. So if you've got flowers or butterflies, look, at it's just so darn pretty. I need to get those little pieces out. It's going to annoy me, but <laughs> it's so darn pretty and easy. And then you're also left with this piece. So we were left with the two pieces when we die cut out. I don't know if it's small enough to mat. Nope, it's gonna be the same size. So we're left with the two pieces that you can then use for something else if you want. You can, you can make another card using these two pieces, absolutely. But I did wanna show you what you can do with the foam, that it will die cut out, and we did use the thick foam, the thick foam. So when you're wanting something with dimension on your cards, on your scrapbooks, on your mixed media, on your altered art, and you wanna make sure that it's sturdy and stable, Absolutely, this is the foam for you because it's not going to crush down and it's self-adhesive. So let me just take a little bit of stay put. I'm just gonna take a little bit of stay put and put it on the back side so I can take glue this down. Will Stacy tape work on these dies? I'm gonna tell you not really. They're very curly and intricate, and the Stacy tape 
to put it on the back of the piece of paper and try to get it off. You can give it a whirl. You absolutely can. If you've got the patience for it, by all means, I'm just going to take some of my stay put and tap it down and then put it onto my for me that's faster, easier, it dries super quick and for all intents and purposes we're good, it's down. Now it's self-adhesive on the back rid of these. It's all self-adhesive. So now I could take it, peel my back off, and it's an instant sticker. That's the foam. It's pretty cool, but it gets really so much cooler. So I'm gonna move on. I just wanted you to see that it will die cut very easily when you're using something that's open or not very intricate. It just pops out. Now, remember, this is the thickest that we're selling. So it's the three mil, not the two mil. So if the three mil works great, imagine how easy peasy the two mil is going to be. And you get two sheets of each. You get two full sheets of three mil and two full sheets of two mil. So I'm going to put this aside because now I want to take you in a completely and totally different direction that you probably are not going to be expecting at all. I hope you're not going to be expecting it. <laughs> I was so excited about this. Okay. I have my, my plates. I need to get my plates to make sure that I have them here. All right. I'm going to take some of my foam and I'm going to cut off a piece. Actually, maybe I can use this. Still three mil. I'm just going to cut it in half. Still got the little bumpy in there. I'm going to cut it in half. Now, I'm going to start with the foil. Remember, it's got those bumpies in there. I don't care. I'm going to grab a piece of foil. Now, this is the, um, the Couture Creations foil that we did from National Scrapbooking Day. You can use your Art Deco foil. What foil do you have? Try it. Trust me. This is $2.80 a roll. It has over 15 feet on it. For foil, it is the most economical foil out there. So if those of you who ordered it on National Scrapbooking Day or doing or during the, the YouTube for the GoPress foil machine, you're going to love it. You are absolutely going to love it. And if you already have foil at home, give it a try. Now, I cut my piece of foil a little bit bigger than my foam. I'm going to pull back my foam and expose my sticky. Now, if I needed to do something, I could always put that stick, that liner back on because it won't stick to the sticky. I'm going to take my foil and with the shiny side, the pretty side facing me, I don't want to see the gray side. I want to see the pretty side facing me. I'm just going to lay it right down over the top. Now, it may have some bumps in it. It may have some some lines in it. It may not have gone down perfectly straight. I don't, it's fine. It's okay. It's going to be fine. It is not perfect. I did not get it down perfect. You've got bumps, you've got lines, you've got little places where it's an oopsie. Don't worry about it. You're going to peel that foil off. and the foil gets left behind. But wait, can you see that I missed some spaces where it had those little bumps and those little oopsies? Not a problem. You see the extra on here? See where it didn't transfer? I'm just gonna take that and push it right down on top of those white spaces. Any place that needs a little extra foil, I'm just gonna fill it in with what didn't get used. And you're saying, oh, but it just doesn't look so good. Oh, but wait. 
I promise. Okay, so I want to just get those little pieces in there just to make sure that every place is good. I didn't miss any place. If I did, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so now I've got, I've got this piece of foil on foam. And it's like, well, now what to do with it? You could die cut it, absolutely. I could take this, my frame, and put it over and die cut it out. And then I would have a foiled background that I could then take another piece of paper and die cut my best wishes and layer it on top. Sure, but let's do something different. Let's try something new. This is my simply defined embossing folder for May, my uh, with sentiment embossing folder. $3.75. It is an A2 embossing folder. I hope you like it. It's indexed so you can see. I'm going to put my foil inside my embossing folder. I have a little bit more. I want to get that little sticky piece right there. Right there and right there, right there, just so it doesn't stick to my embossing folder. Right there. Okay, so I'm going to put it right into my embossing folder. Foil side up. Here's my embossing folder. The index, which means it's printed on the front so you know which is the top side. Foil side up up. Now I'm going to bring over my Big Shot machine. I've got my multi-purpose platform. I need to open it to tab one because tab one tells you it does embossing folders. Translucent embossing folders, whether they be Sizzix or Simply Defined or Derice or Cuddlebug or Couture Creations or uh, whomever embossing folder, Tonic Studios, you're always going to do it on tab one of your multi-purpose platform. And it doesn't matter if you've got the small one or the large one, it's still tab one. If it's translucent, if you can see through it, you're gonna use tab one. Now, I'm gonna put down a cut plate and a, my folder and a do not cut plate. It really doesn't matter because it's an embossing folder so it doesn't cut into anything anyway. And I'm going to roll it on through. Yep, a little bit of creaks and a little bit of cracks, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. And then I'm going to move that off to the side. I know. <laughs> no, either you're going, you're either going, oh, like I was. I needed my foil to be able to do this. Or not my foil, my foam. I needed my foam to be able to do this. I'm so excited. Truly, I am. Is that magnificent? Okay, really? Oh my gosh, gorgeous. Is that awesome? And it kept its dimension. Uh huh. Happy day right there. Think of all of the embossing folders that you have. Think of the, the foils that from Deco Foil or the Minx or whomever you got them from. Look at how beautiful is this. And again, this is using my $3.75 simply defined with sentiment embossing folder. Now you're gonna peel the back off and I will tell you, I'm not gonna fib. I will tell you, peeling the back off can be a little tricky. It's going to leave, you're going to have to get in there with a pair of tweezers and just pick up some of that liner because it's embossed, it's debossed the back obviously, so that's pushed into the foam and it wants to stay there. But once you peel it off and you put it down, I don't know that I have anything pretty to put it down on. I want something pretty and I don't. <laughs> Once you peel it off and put it down. No, I'm not gonna do that, it's too pretty. It is amazing. Imagine this matted on black. Oh, if I had some black paper right now, I'd do it. 
Imagine that matted on black. And all I did, let's do it really quickly. One more time, just super fast, one more time. So I've got my, well, let's cut a bigger piece. I've got my foam. And again, if it works on the two mil, it's gonna work on the, or if it works on the three mil, it's gonna work beautifully on the two mil as well. You know what, maybe, maybe I will just do half. Let's just do a half a piece. Maybe you don't want to do a whole piece. Maybe you want to border on something. I'm going to trim that down. Trim that down. So I'm just going to use a, a half a piece. I'm going to bring over my foil. Again, I'm going to cut a piece a little bit larger than what I need. I'm going to expose my sticky, not wanting to touch. What will happen if I touch? Okay, it's really sticky. So last one time I somehow got my nail on it. And it literally, I mean, it is super sticky. So put my foil right over the top of it. Doesn't matter if it doesn't go down perfect. Ooh, yeah, good. Let's make it not perfect. Doesn't matter if it doesn't go down perfect if it's got little creases and all sorts of stuff. Don't worry about it. Pull that foil right up. Anywhere it's got a little white space, you're just gonna go back through and cover that up. Now, if you get it down nice and straight and, and uniform, you don't have as many of these little places you've got to go back and cover up. But if you do have them, you can see that it's not an issue at all. I'm just putting foil right down on top of it and filling in those spaces. It's not a biggie at all. Oh, I didn't get my liner off right there. So right there, I didn't get my liner off. So I'm going to take that off and put some foil on that piece right there too. It's not messy. Okay. Now I'm just gonna cover half of it. I'm just gonna do half of my embossing folder. So now I'm just gonna do that half. Bring over my machine. Remember that I am using not tab two because that's for wafer dies. I'm gonna open my platform up to tab one, and it shows you right there, it shows you embossing folders right on the, on the instructions. I'm gonna put down a plate, I'm gonna put down my embossing folder, I'm gonna put down another plate, and I'm gonna send it on through. One roll is plenty. And now I've done half. So pretty, so easy. And if there's places that are still tacky, you can just go back and put it on, although I think this is perfect. So pretty, so easy. Full size, half size, what do you wanna do? And it's using your embossing folders that sometimes we put away and we forget about, but they're so useful. They're one of the easiest ways to make an embellishment or make something pop by just using simple paper or simple foils. But we're not done yet. 
I'm still not done. I have another thing to show you with this. Because what if you don't own foils? A lot of you may not own foils, but I bet many of you own, whether it be the Nouveau brand of flakes. There's the, so this is the Nouveau uh, Glitter Flakes, Mega Flakes, and it's a leafing guild. There's uh, Indigo Blue has flakes. Uh, lots of, you may have had these from 20 years ago and you're still sitting on them. Okay, let's do something with it. Cut my foam. Just depends upon the size you want it to be. Let's do another half. See, now I would never throw this away. This is foam that I just cut off. These are perfect pop dots. All you got to do is go through and cut to the size you need. I would not throw this away for, a, for anything because you can certainly put it behind something to make that piece pop up. Nobody's ever going to see it, so don't ever throw it away. Keep those little bits and pieces. They're useful. They're handy. All right, so now I've got my Nouveau uh, gilding flakes. And again, it doesn't matter whose gilding flakes you have. Just try. I'm going to pull off my liner to expose my sticky. I'm going to grab some of this, and I'm just going to kind of lay it down. Now, don't sneeze when you have this open. And really, I usually put a bunch of it into like a, um, a Tupperware because it's easier. Because as this aerates in the, in the jar, it will expand. So I put it into a big old Tupperware. Now Nouveau makes three colors. They make the gold, the silver, the copper. But I know Indigo Blue and several other companies made lots of colors because we carried them at one time. It just got a little hard to get them back in stock. So right now, all we do is we just carry the basics from Nouveau because I know I can get it pretty much any day, any week that I need it. But if you've got anybody's gilding flakes, and I just put them on there, and it's not so pretty. They're just kind of laying on top. Do not sneeze. Do not have your fan going. Do, you know. And then I'm going to take a stipple brush. And again, it doesn't matter whose stipple brush you use. This one's by Dream Weavers. But... Holy smokes, artichokes. If you've got a stencil brush from time gone by when we all were stenciling everything in the, in the 80s, it's going to work just fine. And all I'm going to do is tap it all down into place and kind of spread it around. And I want it to stick to my sticky. It's going to stick right to my foam. Let's put a little bit more. I want to cover the entire thing as best as possible, which should be pretty darn easy because this just goes right over. Any place where it's not, you just add a little piece of it. I have been known, turn it over and just pick it all back up no waste. You can take tweezers if you wanted to have a mix and do a gold, silver, and copper combination. You could take tweezers and just pull out a couple pieces of each and that way you had a multi combination. got one more place that just needs a little bit more. So I'm going to go in and pick all of this up. Rub it around one more time. Oh, I got a little piece of paper in there. Oh, there it goes. One more flake. Right and there's that darn paper again, right there. Okay, so I've got it completely covered now. 
And again, it kind of looks like a mess. It doesn't look awesome. But wait. Now I've got gilding flake all over here. I'm going to take my glitter cleanup uh, cloth and I'm just going to wipe it all off. These pieces are not big enough for me to put back into my pot. If they were, I absolutely would. So now I've got gilding flake all over my foam. I'm going to take my embossing folder. I don't know which one I want. Oh, how about that one? And I'm just going to do right there. So I'm going to put my lid back on my flakes. Put your lid back on before you sneeze. So with the glitter cleanup cloth, it just picks up everything. Embossing powder, gil uh, gilding flakes, it glitter. <laughs> I'm going to bring my machine right back over and I'm going to send it through using the same sandwich. I'm on tab two, or no, tab one. I'm sorry, I'm on tab one. I've got a clear uh, a plate down below. I've got my embossing folder with my pretty shiny side gilded side face up so I can see it right through the black. My next plate on top and I'm just gonna send it on through and I only need to send it through once. Now you can do the whole embossing folder, you can do half of the embossing folder. Those flakes you haven't used for a long time. Peel them out. Because that's what you get. Is that gorgeous? All done with flakes. You would never know that those were gilding flakes. And an embossing folder to give you such definition. It's beautiful. What a lovely embellishment to add to something. They're gorgeous and they're easy. So I want you to see the foil gives you a little more foily iridescence when you do it. Whereas with the gilding flates, you get this beautiful matte on matte finish where it's, it's, it's there and you see it and it's gorgeous, but it's not nearly as shiny. It's almost a watermark in gold versus this one's gonna be a little shinier. Which one do you like better? And did you know that you could take foam, really good foam, and do this? And then again, you just peel your back and you're going to stick it down to whatever you wanna stick it down to. So the foam isn't just about using it as an, a, as a pop dot or as a way to elevate something. The foam is really to be used to create something with dimension and elegance and beauty and that will stay. They won't, it won't crush down and it's safe for your scrapbooks and it's safe for your cards and it's safe for your altered art. And if you don't want to see the white all the way around, you take a Sharpie marker before you put it down. Absolutely. You could take a Sharpie marker or a gold fleck pin and go across here. Well, you even could full, you could even gold fleck this one and foil this one. But I could have taken a brown Sharpie and gone all the way around so that you don't see the white at all. Just grab a permanent marker. If you were doing it in black, you could color it in black. And that way nobody even knows it's any different than the paper. And it adds such a dimension, such an element. You want to use with with sandable paper? Sure, through an embossing folder on sandable paper. Absolutely, you can do this. And gosh, you may already have too many embossing folders, but hopefully you like mine. <laughs> this really is simply defined with sentiment, the embossing folder that goes with it. But like I said, I wanted to show you what more the foil can do, just how much you can do foil. Oh, it's foam, Stacy. Holy smokes artichokes, what more the foam can do because it really can add and taking an embossing folder that, that you may have 
forgotten you have and you don't play with them nearly as often. Get them out. Play with them. Get your flakes out. Play with them. Get your foil out from who, it doesn't matter who manufactures it, and play with it. The only thing that you need is a pack of the foam. I said it right this time, foam. <laughs> That's what you need, a pack of the foam. And then all the little bits and pieces and the extras you save to use that as your pop dots. Really, really happy with it. Really excited about it, really pretty. And just remember that when you're peeling off the back because it's, can you see it's debossed or the back? You may have to get in there with your tweezers and pull some of it up. Not a big deal. Once you get it all off, you just right down to whatever makes your heart happy. So, while I have the most beautiful dies to show you, and truly I do, I really wanted to bring this to you because this is so exciting to me and so new and so different that um, I'm hoping you haven't seen it before. That would make my heart happy that we were able to bring you something that perhaps you haven't seen before. So there it is. You get four eight and a half or eight by eleven sheets. Two of them are two mil thick and two of them are three mil thick. It is nine dollars and ninety nine cents. So when you're looking at pop dots and things like that, and, and you're looking at something this thick, we don't actually sell pop dots this thick. We don't have anything that that comes this thick. That's one of the reasons why I made it as thick as I did, so that it brought even more dimension and gave you even more opportunity to play with it. So $9.99, but then I do have the rest of the collection to show you. So I am going to do that because, because I did play with, with this one to show you how everything works, that you can do a background, you can cut into, you can cut out of. But Elena, of course, has made the most beautiful storyboards for you, and I want to show you those. So let's start with, let's start with, thank you. So you have the frame, you have the negative from the frame, you have the thank you cut into the paper, and then you have the thank you cut out of the paper. And this die comes with two corners. So this is the thank you. And my goodness, it's just so useful and just so very elegant. So there's thank you. Next, I have congratulations. And I showed you the card that we did with the congratulations. So you've got the frame that you can use for anything. You've got the negative that you can use for anything. You've got the congratulations cut into the paper. And then when you use the frame and the die with the word together, it will cut out of the paper. So there we have congratulations. And again, the make and take for today was the congratulations. Then we have hello. <laughs> so we have the frame, we have the negative, we have the word hello, because sometimes you just need to say hello. So hello cut into paper and hello cut out of paper. I know everybody's starting to either sing Lionel Richie or Adele right now. <laughs> but I like hello, because sometimes that's what you just want to say. Hello, how are you? Thinking of you. All right, then we have happy birthday. So you've got the frame, you've got the negative. Now Elena cut out the corners because the happy birthday comes with corners. You've got the happy birthday cut into the paper and you've got the happy birthday cut out of the paper. So you get the corners with this set as well. And that's happy birthday. And the collection is with sentiment. Next, we have best wishes. So I've got the frame. So every frame is different. And every word is different. So no two frames are the same. And then we have the best wishes cut in and out of paper. Cut into the paper and then cut out when you use the two dies together.
So each set has two dies. It has the one that will cut the frame, it will have the one that cuts the decor die that cuts into, and then when you cut into and add the frame around it, it will cut out. And this is best wishes. Next, we have deepest sympathy. And this one also comes with corners because you know me, I'm paying for metal. If I can fit, if I can fit more on the metal, I'm going to give you more. So here's the frame, here's the negative. There's cut into and cut out of deepest sympathy and corners. Now the corners you can use on anything. You can use those corners with any of the, the dies. You don't have to use these dies at all just to use the corners on different projects. But I had the space to add them, so I did. So that is the six, yes? So I have deepest sympathy. I have best wishes. I have happy birthday. I have hello. I have congratulations. And I have thank you. So these six make up the I Want It All bundle. If you buy all six of these in the I Want It All bundle, they're $10 each, your price is $59.99. If you just like one or two of them and you just want the one or two, your price is $13.99. And again, you get every die that you see. So if it comes with corners, those are added bonuses, but every die has a frame and the decor die. And there's the thank you. Okay, but we're not done because of course we have a contour die. And I'm in love with the contour die this month. In love with it. So here's the contour die cut into paper. You get two of them. You have two different, two different edges cut into the paper. Then you can cut them out of the paper. Then you get the backing and the shadow for them if you want the shadow for them. So you can put layer these on top of here and mix the colors. So I could have taken this one right here and put it on this one right here and it would have shadowed it. Then you have all of the little bits and pieces that come out of the centers of the contour dies. All the little bits and pieces, all those little flourishes and frills and then because I could, I got one more in the center of the set with roses. All of this, you can do all of this and more for your $15.99. The contour is always sold separate. Wait till you see the samples they made with the contour die. Contour die always sells out first. Well, now the must-haves actually sell out first. Ah. Then we have the embossing folder that I played with today. So we sanded it and we embossed it and we debossed it. So debossing means we just flipped it over. And then of course, we used it with the foil and we used it with the gilding flakes to get you a beautiful look and it is $3.75 for the embossing folder. Sold separately, it's not part of the $59.99 bundle. Last but not least, we do have the must-haves. So for those of you who have never followed along, the must-haves is a larger set of dies. We've already done the ovals and the rectangles. We are now on to the circles and all of these dies will go through your Sizzix Big Shot machine, your Vagabond machine, your Fabby machine, your, um, your Vintage Big Shot machine. First off, you get to make all of these circles. The set does all of these circles. But then, I wanted to give you more. So not only can you make all of the circles, in between is a stitch die. So you can do the plain circles, or you can do circles with the stitching on them. But then we wanted to do dots and hash marks or, or your little cross hatches. So you've got corresponding dies down here that will fit 
with the, the straight line dies up here. So you can do dotties or you can do cross hatches. And then I had more space. We'll get to the more space in a minute. So here's all of the circles you can do. And they will all go through your Big Shot machine. Absolutely. You don't need to have anything wider than a Big Shot machine. Here are all the circles with your stitched element into it. So can you see all the circles with the stitching? All the different sizes. You get to make all of these. You can do all of these with it. All of these out of the same die set. So we've got all the stitched. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine plain, nine stitched. But then I wanted to give you dots as well. So these all have cute little dots in them. So they've got little dotty patterns. And with the dots, you get to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sizes of circles with dots in them that you can stitch through, you can layer, you can do whatever you want with. But we also wanted to give you the little cross hatches, which are these teeny little X's and they're so cute. And you get to do one, two, three, four, five, six, six of those. And we still haven't, we're still all in the same set. Of the, so all of this in the same set, but then you can vary it up. You can make frames because if you take two dies and put two different sizes, circles, and put them together and cut them at the same time, you make frames and you can put your own stitched elements in it, whether you like the cross hatch or the, the stitched edge. You've got a frame here with the dots. You've got just a plain frame and more. All of this can be done with that one set. How cute. Look at how cute is that? All done with the must haves. And that's why we call them must haves. Because once you have them, you truly have enough to do just about anything your little heart could desire. We know that there are companies out there that will sell you four or five of the circles when all they'll do is the stitched and they're more than what we charge. The entire set is $29.99 and this keeps it affordable. This allows many of you to have a complete set to do what you want with without having to, to have one set that just does stitches and one set that just does dots and one set that just does cross hatches. But can you see these little pieces here? I had more room and you know me, if I'm buying the metal, I'm taking my, I'm going to fit as much as I can in there. So I did banners. <laughs> oh my gosh, are they the cutest things ever? <laughs> and you can do the banner with the stitching. You can do the banner without the stitching. And then I gave you three different tails. So you could decide what tails you want for your banners. Okay. That alone. <laughs> And that's the free part of the die. That's the, oh, I have more space. What else can I fit? I fit banners. Oh, they're so cute. And they're right in there because there was more room. Let me show them right on the back. Love, love, love. And that is why these are called must-haves because you just have to have them. Love my banners. I'm very happy that I gave you three different tails because maybe you don't want this one today. Maybe you want that one today, or maybe this is more guy for you. I don't know. They're just darling. And maybe you want it with the stitched. Maybe you don't want it with the stitched. I don't know. You have options, options. Now, before I get to all the samples, Elena put this together. <laughs> These are cards that I made <laughs> when I was doing my quality controlling. So I have, I get samples in, um, of the dies and then I have to cut them to make sure that they cut the way I want. So they're not finished, but I wanted to give you an idea. There's the congratulations with the corners cut in. Now I cut that congratulations into cardstock. It did not cut all the way out. And then I added the corners. Here is one of the contour dies. And then I took the negative that's in this space here and I put it down here because it fell out and I didn't want to not use it. Now I could put a beautiful sentiment in the middle. I've got deepest sympathy here where now I've cut the die out. Unlike this one where I left the die 
you know, the cut into the paper and had the paper mat all the way around, this one I cut the die completely out. And then here I cut the contour into the paper and backed it with the teal and then again took the negatives and used the negatives on top of the paper. So these were mine. These are what I do when I have to QC to make sure everything's going to work just right. And then to play with the foam, I did these. So I've got the hello, I've got best wishes, I've got happy birthday, and I've got thank you. And they are all on the foam. All on the foam. So this is what I do <laughs> when I have to QC dies, when they come in and it's time for me to make sure that they are exactly what I want them to be. All right, now let's get to samples because I do have some beautiful samples. Let's start with Michelle. Okay, so Michelle has got best wishes. And she used the embossing folder on my uh, bedazzled paper. Here she's got thank you in the glitter. Such a soft, sweet card. This is Michelle. She did the watermelon card that I showed on Facebook. This is using the must-haves circles. She cut her circles. She scored it. Made a watermelon. Took the black hearts that were pearls. These are pearls. They were pearl color that we showed last week in the craft consortium. She used a black Sharpie marker and made little heart seeds out of them. And then she put in the center uh, one in a melon. This was all done with the must have circles. Super cute. And then Michelle also put out, she made a cute little t-shirt out of glitter, the, uh, you know, you can heat it with your iron. She die cut it out and put it right to a cute little t-shirt. Hello. How cute is that? This is Michelle. Let me get that. I can't get my hand under it. Michelle. And that's all on a t-shirt. Cute, huh? So that's Michelle. Then we have Sharon. And Sharon did two sympathy cards. So you have with deepest sympathy and then another one from Sharon with deepest sympathy. It's elegant. It's pretty. It can be what you want. You can, it just, it says what you need to say in an elegant way. So that's Sharon. Then we have Yvette. Now Yvette used alcohol ink. And she used my rectangle must-haves and the best wishes and did it out of alcohol ink. So it's got a shine to it because she had to use uh, glossy paper to make that alcohol ink work. So this is Yvette. Yvette also did the happy birthday. And she left the corners in and just pulled out some of the doodads. She actually left the corner cuts in and she's got a beautiful happy birthday. Then we have her congratulations for a graduate. Congratulations. And then we have her best wishes, which includes the contour die. It's got the shadow behind it. Just beautiful. So this is Yvette and her best wishes. Then we have Doris. Now Doris took the circles and she made cute little, cute little rocker cards. Huh? <laughs> All she did was take the circle, score it, and made a rocker card. Love it. And then she used the circles to decorate the front. She used the banner. This is Doris. How cute is that? Love this card. Then she made a half of a rocker card where she just used the banner. And again, one of my must-have circles, 
she used the stitch, she used the, the circles to make the half circle and she stitched, put the stitched in it and you just sit it there and it, it rocks. <laughs> they make me happy. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but it makes me happy. <laughs> this is Doris. <laughs> Okay, Doris also did a shaker using my original must-haves, which were the ovals. So, and she used the foam to build the shaker because the foam is thick enough to build your own shaker. And she used happy birthday on the front. This is Doris. Darling, isn't it? And finally, Doris did this one. which is another happy birthday, but a little more masculine. This is a lovely masculine card. You've got the map around the outside, the colors. So it doesn't have to be girly girly if you don't want it to be. This is Doris. Then we have Kathy. And Kathy has put together a beautiful thank you card. And she's used glitter to do the corners. And then she's put together using the must-have circles. Happy birthday, Dad. That's just using the circles. And can you see? She's got the little dotties all in them. Because you can. Because we give you everything that you're going to need. So you can do the stitching, the dotting, or the, uh, the cross hatches. Happy birthday, Dad. And then she did a layout. It's a boy. She's had a boy grandbaby recently. So she took one of my older dies from Simply Refined and she married it with a Simply Defined die from the With Sentiment collection. Congratulations. And she put together a beautiful layout. Oh, don't want to get the glare. So this is Kathy. Okay, then we have Belinda, and Belinda used, remember that extra die I threw in on the contour because I could because there was a little bit of room in the center? That's what I did. She took the corners from one of the with sentiment dies. She did the roses from the contour die, and then she's got the thank you and she just kind of stripped it apart. She cut out the thank you from the center and laid that thank you down all by itself. This is Belinda. And I love how she used that extra contour piece that I got into that contour die. Then she also used the contour die here. So you've got one contour die here, you've got another one here, and there's the third. All three of those come in that $15.99 set. This is Belinda. And she used the must-haves, the circles, and she used the dots. All right, then we have Elena. Now, Elena's the queen of repurposing, so who knows what this started out as, but she always used illuminated, she illuminated it, luminary, and She's got a light going behind it, and she's got best wishes, and what a cute little card for Christmas. She's got the foil, the glitter, and she's just the queen of repurposing. So this is Elena, who also does all of the storyboards. And then she decided to do a layout. Who knew? So Elena's got the hello, she cut it out of the die, she's got all the little photo corners all the way around, and she used the frames, the different frames, to cut her pictures out, and she shadowed them. All of these are done with the different frames that come with the, the with sentiment dies. She didn't use the words at all, she just used the frames and all the cute little, all the cute little corners. So this is Elena, and now that I know she can do a layout, <laughs> oh Elena! <laughs> last, last we have Claire. 
I'm gonna slide them over. And Claire used, again, the must-haves, the circle must-haves to put this card together. And she cut out the congratulations. She just got rid of the rest of the frame around it and put it across the top. So this is Claire. Then we have, again, she used the circles and the banner and woof woof. You know, Claire's the lead, um, the lead volunteer at the animal shelter in Castaic. So I have a feeling she's going to want this card back. <laughs> and she used the foam to pop up and, but super cute. Using the must have circles. Then she got a little crazy. She had some fun with some glitter and the embossing folder where she glued up the embossing folder and ran it through and the glue stuck to the high points and she drizzled glitter all the way around it and then she die cut out the congratulations in glitter. This is Claire. And then we have her best wishes card which is simply gorgeous. It's just beautiful. Who wouldn't want to get that card in the mail? Just lovely. Her best wishes card. And then her hello card. Done with the flakes. Now she tried to cut the hello out of foil or out of the foam. She did. I'll tell you, I don't advise it. She did it, but it took a lot of picking out in little pieces because that foam is very sticky. But there's her hello card. And then last but not least, Claire put together a beautiful mixed media piece. So she's got the banner in the center. And she's got the contour dies on the side. And then she's got the negatives coming up and down. These are pieces that fell out of the contour die. But her mixed media piece is absolutely gorgeous. It's gorgeous all the way around. Claire did an amazing job. I'm, can I open it? I'm afraid to. No, I'm going to keep it closed. OK. She did an amazing job. And here she used embossing powder. She used frontages. Fran from Stampendous, her frontage uh, embossing, aged enameled embossing powder. And I think this is the Seasons is the name of the color she used. Beautiful. So that is it for today. Oh, okay, let's go back, back. Okay, better. <laughs> I hope you like the newest collection of Simply Defined. I really do. But more importantly, I hope you see what you can do with foam that's adhesive on both sides. It's not just for making pop dots. Oh heavens no. It can be die cut, it can be foiled, it can be it can be flaked. There's lots to do with it because the adhesive is on both sides. And again, I do think we're the only ones out there that have a product like this that I've been able to find that's this thick, that you get this many sheets, and that does this many different things at just $9.99. So where do you find all of these great things? You find them at scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Remember, Simply Defined and Simply Refined are our own brands and you can't find them anywhere else. They're just exclusively to us. They're my designs, they're my, they're my creations, my head at three o'clock in the morning thinking, oh, I wonder if we could do. <laughs> And thankfully, a lot of the time we can. Now, it took 13 months to get the foam here, but it was worth the wait. Patience, patience pays off. And I'm glad because I think that when you start playing with it, you're just going to love it. All right. Scrapbookingmadesimple.com. It's me, Stacy. I, uh, I was going to say Scrapbooking Made Simple again, but I will see you next week for YouTube number 205. All right, you guys. Have a super weekend, okay? Bye.